Hello and welcome back to my channel. So I just want to start off by saying that my heart goes out to all of you that have been affected by the UK's new restrictions. I know it's going to affect a lot of people's Christmases, but I just wanted to make sure that you all know that I'm thinking of you and it's a bit crappy really, isn't it? But the chances are you've clicked on this video for a little bit of light relief and to look at some good food ideas because who doesn't like watching food videos? So I'm going to take you through some of the things we've eaten recently. So this week there is a brunch, there's a salmon pasta dish, there's a roast dinner that I kind of failed a little bit by burning certain items but I will leave you to watch it anyway. I hope everyone is doing okay. If you do enjoy this video make sure to leave me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Let's go and have a look at the video. Okay, so the first meal I'm going to make is kind of like a KFC Zinger Burger fake away. I have got an entire video, like a step-by-step -step tutorial on this on this channel, but it is really, really simple. So I'm just whisking together two eggs, and what I'm going to do is get some chili heatwave Doritos and crush them up and pop them into a bowl. And then it's just as simple as getting some skinless and boneless chicken thighs and dipping them first in the egg and then into the Doritos so they get nice and coated. So then I'm just going to put them on a baking tray and spray them with a little bit of spray oil before popping them into a preheated oven. I do mine on about 180 degrees and I do them for 10 minutes on one side, take them out and turn them over and give them another 10 minutes, so 20 minutes in total and just make sure that the juices are running clear and there are no pink bits left in the middle. While my chicken's cooking I also use the oven to cook some hash browns and then toast a couple of brioche buns and then it's just a case of assembling them so we put a cheese single on the top and you can add whatever sauces you like so maybe some sweet chilli, we've used mayo you can also add lettuce, cucumber, tomato, basically anything you like but the basis of it is just chicken thighs, dipped in egg and crushed Dorito Right, so for tonight's dinner we have got roast chicken, roast potatoes, we've got roasted carrots, roast sprouts and we've got a frozen beef dripping extra fine Yorkshire pudding, these are the Tesco ones ones that I just had left over in the freezer there's also a spare sausage on there and I'm just going to plate up mine and Steve's there was also supposed to be cabbage but I had a bit of a mishap where I put the cabbage on to boil and then realised when it started crackling that I hadn't added any water so we kind of had a burnt saucepan and soapy smelling cabbage so I wasn't going to dish that up but everything else turned out okay so I just wanted to add in a little hot chocolate platter that we created for the boys. So there were chocolate chips, white chocolate chips, flakes, marshmallows, candy canes and Cadbury's fingers along with obviously hot chocolate. We also had whipped cream and this went down really well. If you do follow me on Instagram, it's just Victoria Folger, you will see pictures of the finished product. Very, very sickly but a really nice treat for a weekend. So I had brioche buns to use up another night so I decided to do some chicken thighs and halloumi with some lettuce and onion. We usually have this in wraps but I wanted to use the buns and I have mine as a salad because I'm just not a real fan of bread but I love the beetroot and the halloumi. It's one of the best combinations. If you've never had beetroot and halloumi you really need to try it and as always I marinated the chicken in some tandoori seasoning. So I'm just starting tonight's dinner and I'm kind of winging it a little bit. I bought two of these in Aldi but they only serve two people and obviously there's five of us and my boys eat big portions of pasta. This is not going to fill a teenage boy. So um, I've also got some plain pasta on the boil in there. I'm going to just top my pasta bake up a little bit with that. But I just bought these two sauces as well. They're both from Aldi. They're identical. I don't know if you can see on camera. But I poured this one in and it was like water. Like literally just runny. And then I poured this one in and it was more like tomato puree. So... Yeah, they're meant to be exactly the same, but they're not. So I'm going to add some tomato puree, a little bit of seasonings, probably some basil or thyme or something. And then I might put like a couple of tablespoons of Philadelphia just to make it like a creamy pasta bake. And then I'm going to mix the plain pasta in with the filled pasta, pop it in an oven dish, top it with cheese and put it in the oven. But I just thought I'd stretch it a little bit with plain pasta and I think we're going to serve it with a bit of salad as well. So I've just tipped my two packets of pasta in with my like plain shaped pasta. I'm not going to cook it all the way, um, I'm just going to cook it sort of three quarters. My other pasta has been in for about four minutes and then I'll probably leave it about three more. And then just drain it, pop it in my oven dish and then my sauce, I've just added some cream cheese, a little bit of salt and pepper and some tomato puree. And I'm just going to mix it all together. Right, so here it is just before it goes in the oven. I'm just going to cover it with foil and give it about 20 minutes. Then take the foil off and probably give it another 10 so it goes all golden brown. 
Right, so I've took it out of the oven and topped it with some cheese. I also had some pepperoni that needed using up in the fridge, so I've popped that on top as well. Now I'm going to stick it back in for another 10 minutes. All right, so here it is out of the oven and the pepperoni's gone all nice and crispy and I've burnt the edges of my tin as always. <laughs> it's a nightmare to clean. But I'm just going to pop this in some bowls and I will show you it plated up. And here we are all plated up. I've just done some salad, some coleslaw. So we've got lettuce, tomato, cucumber, coleslaw, and then we've got our pepperoni pasta plus filled pasta bake. And it's got the cheese melted on the top and that's what we're having for dinner tonight. So for tonight's dinner, I've just done some hot dogs in rolls. This one is actually Jake's, which is why he's got two sausages in a roll, ketchup. He's got two extra sausages and I've done some sort of roast potatoes. They've been done in the air fryer. So I just put some Kerala salt and chili seasoning, which I use all the time. You get it in home bargains. Nope. Yes, it is home bargains. Um, and I just put them in the air fryer on the chip setting, which takes about 25 minutes. I don't peel them or anything. And that's what we've got for dinner tonight. dinner I'm making a cream cheese salmon pasta really really simple dish and really tasty quick to do so I've got some of these boneless wild pink salmon fillets these were from Aldi I think they were just under four pound and you get five fillets so I've just put them on some foil and lightly sprayed it I'm gonna pop them in the oven they take about 20 minutes but I'm gonna do them for around 10 so they're not fully cooked because we're going to add them into our pasta and salmon overcooks really, really quickly. But I want to cook them enough so that I can get the skin off of the bottom. And then basically I'm just going to mix some spaghetti with some garlic and herb cream cheese and a little bit of butter, loads of salt and pepper and some lime juice. And then we just put some broccoli in it as well. So I'm going to cook the broccoli because I've got frozen. Cook that separately. Um, again, cook it almost all the way through but not so it's mushy. And then you just mix it all together but i'll show you as we go along anyway so i'm just going to pop this in right so i've put my cooked broccoli or almost cooked broccoli in a bigger saucepan and a small knob of butter and a tub of this 50 percent less fat garlic and herb cream cheese and then i've flaked up my salmon over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to not mix that through yet because it'll get all mushed up i'm going to drain my pasta I'm also going to save a little bit of the pasta water. It's a good tip if ever you're making a sauce or anything, always save some of the water your pasta cooks in because it will add volume to a sauce without too much like watery liquid because the starch in it like makes it thick, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to drain my pasta, mix it through this, and the heat of that will melt the Philadelphia. And then I'm going to add lots of salt and pepper and lime juice. And then I'll mix my salmon through at the last minute. Also adding in some of this all-purpose seasoning, I just get this in the middle aisle of Lidl when they do their Polish week. Um, I'm going to mix that through as well for a bit more seasoning. And I added probably, I would say, like half a mug or tumbler full of the pasta water as well. And you can see it's all mixing really nicely. 
So what I'm going to do now is add my salmon and mix it through and then it'll be ready to serve. Right, so here it is plated up. I'm just going to add some black pepper to the top and some grated cheese if anyone wants it. But that is what we've got for our dinner tonight. A really simple salmon and broccoli pasta. So that is it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. There's an entire playlist down below if you want to go and have a look over some of my other videos. There's loads of hauls and cook with me's recipes, all that kind of thing. So if that's for you, then make sure to subscribe. Take care of yourselves and I'll be back really, really soon with another video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.